Hello again, welcome to part four uh, of this um, presentation series for the Guyana State Youth uh, Connect for Species at Risk. So we're on this um, part, we're, sorry, this is part three, part three um, species, covering species. We have four species that are um, part of the application to APSAR um, as having a possible benefit from our work um, on the project. So the silver shiner, um, round pig toe, and eastern sand dogger, black red horse. So these are the species that were identified for that application being accepted in 2019. So each time uh, there's an intake for AFSAR, um, there's a different list of species. Um, there's normally a different list um, of species that um, they want to try to um, benefit. And so this is, the, this is the list identified for 2019, I believe, uptake uh, or intake. So the black red horse, Moxostoma duquesni. duquesni. Uh, so the, one of the other themes of, of APSAR is we're using um, indigenous, indigenous um, traditional knowledge, ITK or TEK, traditional ecological knowledge. So this um, by, uh, species is one of the sucker species that occur in the Grand River. And what threatens this species is, is um, pollution and, and uh, siltation um, and, and erosion um, affecting the water quality um, and then the presence of dams and um, in the movement of the species and its population um, so we you know this um, species uh, is, is often when it's being studied in, in the field it often lumped into a category of sucker even though it's a different species from the common white sucker um, and um, so we, we the information we have on the population um, isn't always um, as good as we would like it to be. There are other species of, of red horse in the river as well, and so um, they're often hard to identify and distinguish from each other. And and that's another reason why it's um, um, information on the species is, is um, sometimes lacking. And so I mentioned um, the I, um, indigenous traditional knowledge, or uh, ITK, so um, the oral tradition for this species and uh, some of the other red horse species is um, some of our grandparents talked about, or my grandfather talked about um, this being a food source. So uh, when he was a kid back in the, uh, it would have been the late 30s and four, um, early 40s, uh, they used to actually go out and spear these species in, in the creeks um, that um, are tributaries to the Grand River. Um, so they would go out at night with um, lanterns um, so the men would, would have the lanterns and the spears and, and um, my grandfather was a kid he was a boy and they would go out at night and they would spear these and he had a bag and his job was him and his um, friends and, and relatives the, these little boys their job was to pick up the fish and bag them up and carry them um, as these men um, speared them and threw them up onto the shore so this is a traditional food source so um, quickly looking at the map, we do see that um, there have been uh, red horse observations as recently as 2015 throughout the watershed. And even um, uh, right here in Six Nations, there, there are some observation points here. So the, the ha preferred habitat is um, uh, gravel um, or sandy uh, river, river bottom or substrates, um, um, good water quality um, where there's lots of oxygen and, and lower temperatures. So that means lots of shade. Uh, generally, um, and so that that's the preferred habitat of, of red horse. Eastern sand darter. Um, so what threatens the eastern sand darter is uh, again a siltation and soil washing into the the river and, and uh, degrading the habitat. So um, uh, the muddy water can cover sandbars, which the fine sediment can kill the fish eggs. So not just um, sand darter eggs, but all fish eggs can be affected by um, siltation of, of their spawning habitat, okay? Um, and another um, uh, threat is uh, the round goby. So invasive species um, often threaten our native species and, and can lead to um, population effects or population declines. And so um, there's no specific information culturally or traditionally about Eastern sand darter. Um, however, um, when we um, are um, giving thanks and uh, addressing uh, the waterways and, and the wildlife that we, we feed ourselves with, we acknowledge specifically that there are 
animals that are gonna that they all play a role in keeping our our food system and keeping our ecosystem alive and healthy so you know eastern sand dollar plays a role in, in being a food source for some larger fish um, that we that we would rely on for food okay so um the looking at a rough map here we do see here in the grand river watershed that there has been populations identified and the eastern sand, sand dodger prefers shallow uh, habitats of lakes and streams with clean sandy bottom where it, bur it buries itself in the sand and so its main food source are aquatic insects um, and uh, they have a very small um, mouth which is which limits the size of prey they can eat so if their habitat is affected and the, the correct size prey is not present they, then they cannot feed okay so the next species uh, round peak toe um, pleurobima cent centoxia <coughs> so we have um, a really a really amazing diversity of mussels in the grand river and this is one of the species that's being affected and i believe there are at least two species which are extirpated from the river meaning that they long no longer occur there they're sort of been um, populations have crashed and they're no longer observed in the river um, that doesn't mean that they're extinct it just means that they're no longer in the grand river they may exist somewhere else in other rivers uh, in ontario or the united states but um, anyway the round pig toe does occur here still and uh, the greatest threat is pollution um, and uh, s too much soil in the water um, which is again eroding which we're trying to um, on our project trying to reduce so there's sort of this theme of erosion with, which is affecting a lot of the species uh, again we have another theme um, invasive species so the zebra mussel was introduced uh, to the Great Lakes and it's affecting the native mussels interfering with their breathing and, um, and their movements and so the, um, looking at the um, map here we do see in, in the Grand River again there has been observations um, I know for a fact that um, recent observations as recent as 2020 the summer of 2020 uh, round pig toe was being located um, between the Caledonia Bridge and the Caledonia Dam so it's within um, you know a short distance from our project area and so there is uh, potential that it is um, uh, benefiting from our, our work here um, so the habitat um, for uh, round pig toe is um, deep deep water uh, rivers um, such as the Grand River and, and uh, they prefer sandy rocky and muddy bottoms and they, they are filter feeders so they're filtering the water and so that's how pollution affects them is that when they're filtering the water the pollution can accumulate in their tissues and uh, make them uh, and affect their populations in that way um, the larvae of these mussels so the, the small these small tiny little mussels um, have a really interesting life cycle where the adult mussels have this appendage that they um, the it mimics minnows so it actually looks like a small minnow even the markings and the coloring looks like a minnow which is amazing because mussels don't ha have like eyes they, they have like sensory eyes that can sense light i believe but they don't necessarily necessarily have an eye that can see images um and so <laughs> they have this appendage that looks like a minnow it has eye spots it has it has fins and the fish such as bluegills um will go and try to bite these um appendages and uh, the muscle will then shoot the larvae into the gills of the fish into its mouth through its mouth and the larvae will latch onto the gills and, and feed on the blood um, it's harmless to the fish the fish swims off and and at a certain point the mussels um, drop off of the gills and land in the substrate of the river and start their life cycle um, so this is common with um, some of the mussels in, in the river they all have their own strategy for um, inoculating host fish to to spread their um, larvae And so the silver shiner, um, Notropius photogenis, um, is another uh, minnow species. So um, dam construction, dam construction was mentioned previously in the other species as well. So dams, invasive species, um, pollution, siltation, these are all like the most common factors that affect these populations. The other factor for this species in particular is that uh, the Grand River is in its um, northern range, so it's at the sort of at the um, northern um, 
extent of its range and so that affects its population um, coupled with um, pollution and siltation and, and these other stressors um, the silver shiner has become a species at risk so when we look at the map here we see that it's been observed throughout the watershed um, and as, as preferred habitat are swift currents um, with um, clean gravel and boulder bottoms and they live in schools and feed on crustaceans um, and adult flies that land in the water um, so they, they, they spawn by scattering their eggs on the gravel um, bottom um, of the river so um, the, the stretch of river um, at Chief Food Park and in, in, and in Six Nations used to be historically gravel and, and um, boulder bottom from what I understand but it was dredged it was all like dug out and dredged um, in order for, um, and it was also dammed by, at Caledonia. And so this um, made a, affected the habitat immensely um, between Caledonia Dam and, and um, Cockshut Bridge. The dredging was meant to allow for um, barges to be pulled um, up the river. And this is often a common thing for um, indigenous communities where they put the, this infrastructure and habitat degradation directly um, by the community because um, you know that nece don't necessarily care about the needs of that community historically so it's a it's a direct result of often of colonization where these um, these detrimental infrastructures are put in near First Nations communities and indigenous communities anyway that covers off the species um, for this project and to just quickly to go over um, what the threats are and, and exactly um, what each species is um, that we applied to protect in the, in the project. So, Nyama.